In 1993, Bullfrog Entertainment released Theme Park, a video game with the goal of constructing and maintaining a virtual theme park. It introduced to video games the theme park genre, and the game saw major success, inspiring future titles such as the Roller Coaster Tycoon series, as well as Planet Coaster. In recent years, we've seen video games explode in popularity, becoming one of the most profitable forms of entertainment. What was once a pastime for hobbyists and children is now a mainstream entertainment medium, which is becoming increasingly accessible. In 1993, video games were introduced to theme parks, but in 2020, theme parks will be introduced to video games. We'll be experiencing one of the first video game-based lands built from the ground up, called Super Nintendo World, opening at Universal Studios Osaka with a partner land rumored for Orlando at Universal's yet-to-be-announced fourth gate. Combined, they'll be one of the first true adaptations of the video game medium into the world of theme parks. Now, adapting different entertainment mediums is not something new. Movies and theme parks have been a pair since the beginning. Disneyland opened in 1955 with many movie-based attractions, such as Snow White's Scary Adventure and Peter Pan's Flight. Now, this was a natural partnership. It made sense for theme parks to base attractions and lands around films, as it allowed for further potential, since movies, as an art form, are inherently limited. They are a passive entertainment medium. We experience what the director wants us to experience. If you are interested in details that the movie chooses not to focus on, you're out of luck. You're at the whim of the perspective of the film. But when introducing the movie medium to theme parks, it allowed guests to control that perspective. It allowed you to explore curated details at your own leisure and further expand your personal outlook of the world developed on screen. The Harry Potter-based lands at the Universal theme parks are an excellent example of this. Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley are briefly seen in the movies, featuring merely as a backdrop for the events of the characters, but they're expanded upon greatly in the theme parks to feel like proper, functioning districts. But with video games, you can't expand on these freedoms through theme parks. In games, you control the camera and the character, but you're not bound by physical limitations. Almost everything that can be imagined can be experienced in a video game. With this control and freedom, you're able to experience details and objects at your own pace and leisure. Thanks to ever-progressing technologies, the medium of video games is near limitless. And our real world is not limitless. Theme parks are directed by budget, scale, and physics. In an ever-digital world reliant on controlled rendering, lighting, and textures, the possibilities of emulating video games in reality stray further and further away. Is it fair on the medium to restrict such freedom by adapting it to theme parks? With such unique art styles and settings, is it realistic to bring them into reality? Do video games belong in theme parks? Realistically, you can argue that everything belongs in a theme park. Physical representations in a tangible setting are always exciting if they're faithful to the source material. The reason why we travel in the first place is to be able to experience new places and settings, to expand our horizons and try something different. Adapting video games allows for even more exotic locations and places that keep our theme parks fresh and exciting. Adaptations inherently expand the horizon for theme parks. They force designers and creatives to think outside the box to stay faithful to the source material. We've seen this with emerging technology out of Super Nintendo World. Patented innovations from universals such as drifting ride vehicles and vertically suspended roller coasters help emulate the feeling of video games that players are already used to. These innovations ultimately benefit the industry as a whole and can be expanded upon to create even greater experiences. Also, from a business perspective, it makes sense to finally properly adapt the medium. Video games are becoming increasingly popular. 67% of Americans, which is roughly 211 million people, play video games on at least one device, with almost half of those using multiple devices. The accessibility of casual mobile games has opened up the industry to many new gamers, which act as a gateway to even more grand experiences. Unfortunately though, there are negatives to adapting video games. Video games have the reputation of being an ever-changing medium. As technology progresses, our ability to create more fantastical worlds expands the already near-limitless medium. 
What were once blocks on a two-dimensional plane are now incredible 3D worlds. It leaves a concern that the adaptation of the video game might be left behind, as the medium further develops to a point where it's unrecognisable. Unlike films and television which aren't easily updated after release, video games can be modified at the push of a button. A simple change such as Nintendo deciding to change Mario's hair from brown to blonde would merely be a texture change in a video game, but would require a lot of reworking of costumes, animatronics and wigs with all the additional costs involved in a theme park. Stylized worlds which easily work under the right lighting, textures and rendering run the risk of translating poorly into reality. Mario games have a sleek and polished appearance on almost every surface. The textures in the game share a real life comparison to polished plastic, which can be perceived as cheap or tacky in person. Though if they went with other polished surfaces such as glass or metal, it would ultimately look out of place. If the setting isn't convincing, you run the risk of alienating guests. So to avoid this, some adaptations may try and make video games more realistic, to better blend with the real world. This then runs the risk of the adaptation falling into the uncanny valley, an area in which people feel unsettled by something which is trying to appear too realistic, but isn't too convincing. The Detective Pikachu movie is a good example of this. Whilst the Pokemon look okay, there's an unsettling side to them that makes them appear almost grotesque. Ultimately, the problem that we see with video game adaptations in theme parks is that they're limited compared to their original medium. Video games are the ultimate representation of freedom in entertainment, and adapting that means that you're taking away an element which makes it so special to begin with. But beyond the risks and complications, we're excited to see the future of video games in theme parks. Designers are taking more risks with ideas and the incredible setting of Pandora at Animal Kingdom is a clear indication that theme parks are ready for new challenges such as Super Nintendo World. With Super Nintendo World opening in the coming years, it'll be interesting to see how they battle the challenge of bright colours and fantastical textures starkly contrasted with reality. Bright sun rays, perfect spherical clouds and beautiful particle effects just aren't possible in reality but only time will tell if Universal is able to successfully traverse this new frontier. But what do you think? Do you believe video games will make for a good addition to the world of theme parks? Or can you think of a different medium theme parks should approach instead? We would love to hear your opinions in the comments section down below. On behalf of Dominic and myself, this is review time. Thanks for watching.